You don't actually always need a fertility specialist. Sometimes you can get pregnant naturally by just optimizing a few things. Come follow me and we'll tell you how to do it. I'm Dr. Rahi Victory, Reproductive Endocrinology and Fertility Specialist. Let's review how to optimize your natural fertility. Optimizing your natural fertility is critical for you and can be very, very important for success when you're trying to conceive. It's not always about IVF. We say that on our show all the time. And I want you to know that you can do things on your own at home to maximize your chances of success. So here they are in a real straightforward structured format. So number one, timing of your intercourse. So timing it correctly is critical. If you miss the timing, it's not gonna work. So you've either gone too early or too late and the egg has already passed its chance to fertilize. So we know that that window of opportunity is roughly about five to six days because there's a study that shows that starting as far back as six days prior to your ovulation, one episode of intercourse can actually lead to a pregnancy. And that's because sperm can actually survive inside you for around five to six days. However, that same study showed that the optimal timing is on the day of ovulation and that it's really in the three days before ovulation that you're maximizing your chances of success. So don't try having sex five, six, seven days ahead of time. You want to have it definitely on the day of ovulation and around that time of ovulation is really, really critical. So of course, the next question is, how do I know that I'm ovulating? So there are a load of tests that are available. You can do a luteinizing hormone kit, which is just called an ovulation predictor kit. It measures your LH hormone levels. You can do basal body temperature monitoring. Some people advocate for doing cervical mucus checks. There's loads of different options available to you, but the reality is the only one that's reliable, effective, consistent is doing the ovulation predictor kit. Real simple, buy a package, don't spend a fortune. The fancier they are, they're not necessarily better. Pee on a stick, when you see that you've got either a happy face or two lines, you know that it's positive. When you get to that stage, it's actually the next day that you're releasing your egg. So again, you're gonna go back to making sure you have sex on that day that you're ovulating, which is the day after your kid is positive. Does cervical mucus and basal body temperature help? No, they really don't. And there are studies showing that they're really not that useful. Now there's gonna be a flurry of comments from people swearing that it worked for them or midwives and doulas and so on that swear that it works as well. But the reality is there's good data on this scientifically and it just doesn't work very well at all. It's a very poor marker, so don't bother with that stuff. It drives everybody crazy, especially the temperature monitoring thing. Unnecessary, needless, waste of time. Just go straight to doing your ovulation predictor kit, you'll be much happier. And again, don't spend a fortune on it. You can do it cheap. What about the frequency of intercourse? Well, it's really critical to understand sperm. So sperm responds to the frequency of ejaculation. The more frequently you ejaculate within reason, the better the quality of the sperm. What's within reason? Well, we know for guys that if they're ejaculating every day or every two days, non-stop, so not just around ovulation, but the whole month long, that's going to optimize their sperm quality. So what do you wanna do? You wanna go at least every two days or every day, and then around the time of ovulation, do it every day. There are loads of studies that show that that is the best approach to things. It will maximize your chances of success, and it's actually really healthy for you and your partner. Less stress, better for emotional things like bonding and uh, being a couple and having a, a solid sexual relationship. It's really good for guys in terms of prostate cancer, colon cancer, um, stress, depression, and like I said, it's gonna give you your best chance of getting pregnant. So there's loads of health benefits in addition to your ability to get pregnant. So make sure your frequency is correct. It's gotta be every day or every other day, but around the time of ovulation. So, you know, a day or two before you think you're gonna get that positive surge, you're gonna start every day and then on the day of the positive surge and even one day after is fine as well. What about lubrication? Having all that sex, some people start to find that it's a little dry. Well. There's all sorts of different commercial lubricants available and there's natural lubricants available. And a lot of people are just using the most natural lubricant of all, which is saliva. So the important thing to know is that not all lubricants are created equally. So if you're using a commercially 
available lubricant, like a water-based lubricant, it can actually slow down your sperm by 60% to 100% within an hour of the time that the sperm gets exposed to the lubricant. So that is not a great choice. So these are your conventional water-based lubricants or silicone-based lubricants you can pick up at any pharmacy or adult store. So they are a poor choice if you are trying to get pregnant. Don't use those. Next best option is the oil-based products. So the oil-based products whether it's olive oil, grapeseed oil, coconut oil, they all actually have never been shown to have any negative effect on your sperm. And so that actually is optimal for your chances. What about saliva? Even very dilute amounts of saliva, 6.25%, will drastically reduce the number of sperm that are swimming and how quickly they are swimming. So do not use saliva if you are trying to get pregnant. It's actually very detrimental and it's a really bad idea. Plus it's actually terrible lubricant because it doesn't last very long. Under the friction of intercourse, it's gonna disappear and evaporate within seconds. So what's the very best option? There are some commercially available solutions that you can use that actually are safe for sperm and some of them even potentiate the sperm. So there's one we use all the time called Preseed. Um, I am not advocating for that specific brand, but anything like that is actually a good product to choose because it not only is not detrimental, it can actually be a positive and help you conceive compared to any of those other ones. So what about position? People always ask, is one position better than the next? What about putting your legs up for 20 minutes afterwards? And we've reviewed that on our show, Fertility Factor Fiction. The reality is there is no difference whatsoever. There are loads of studies that show that within one minute of the time that your partner has ejaculated, you can see sperm arriving into the uterus and going up into the fallopian tube. So you don't need to maintain a certain position. Now, I certainly wouldn't jump out of bed right after the ejaculation and run for the bathroom, but if you're getting up or you're changing position, or one sexual position is more comfortable you, for you than any other, you're not gonna do any harm or alter your chances of success. Position does not matter. You do not need to have your legs stay up in the air. You don't need to tilt your pelvis. The only people that might benefit from that, and again, zero scientific proof, are the ones that have a very tilted cervix or uterus, and so it's gonna take it a little bit longer to get in, or if you have a really tight cervix and nothing can exactly get through there. Okay, what about the big O? So if you have an orgasm versus not have an orgasm as a female, does it make a difference? So you gotta remember that when you have an orgasm, you're actually creating a little wave in your uterus, and that can help potentiate the ability of the sperm to travel up towards the tube. But they've actually done studies on this, and it shows that it is of no benefit. So for all the women out there, if you do or you don't, that's totally up to you. It will not alter the success rate of your getting pregnant. But for all the guys out there, make sure your wife is satisfied or maintaining the frequency of intercourse is not gonna happen. So it's really critical that you make sure your wife, your partner, whoever it is, is happy with your sexual encounter or else doing it every day or every other day, nonstop for months on end, may not be something that she is willing to participate in. Okay. What about your diet? Is it important with your diet, which is obviously part of your natural fertility, to optimize things? Well, yes, of course it is. So we know high sugar, high cholesterol diets can create a lot of inflammation. That inflammation leads to oxidation of your sperm. And anytime you have a lot of oxidation, you're gonna have poor quality sperm. So it's really important for the men and for the women because it has the same impact on eggs to maintain a healthy diet. Studies show that a Mediterranean diet filled with fresh grains, fresh fruit, uh, you know, lean meats like chicken or fish will actually improve your chances of conceiving compared to our typical Western diet, which is, you know, more or less cheeseburger and fries all the time. So make sure that you are observing a really healthy diet because that actually can make a difference. There are many studies that show in particular for women with PCOS, that even a small five pound weight loss can make a big difference in how often you ovulate and in your chances of conception. So that can be really critical as well. What's the number one thing you can do that will alter your natural fertility? So it's the big three, don't smoke, don't drink, 
and don't use drugs, including marijuana. So smoking has a huge negative impact. In some studies, as high as an 80%, that's 80% decrease in your chances of success. Damages the egg quality, increases your risks of miscarriage drastically, damages the sperm, and again, increases the risks of miscarriage, even if it's the guy that's just smoking, because you can negatively impact the sperm DNA. What about alcohol? Alcohol is very traumatic to sperm and to egg quality as well. Even a small amount of alcohol can very significantly alter your chances of success and have huge hormonal impact, both for males and for females. So it is critical to avoid alcohol at all costs. Now, lots of guys will say, oh, what about just a couple of beers on the weekend? The truth is alcohol is terrible for sperm, increases sperm DNA damage, decreases your testosterone level, increases the number of abnormal sperm by up to 83%. And if all of that isn't enough to convince you, it's a class one carcinogen, which means we know alcohol causes cancer. And some of that might be coming from something called glyphosate. Glyphosate is literally what they use in Roundup to kill weeds around your lawn and your gardens. So you're actually taking some of that in when you drink beer or wine. And they've done tests looking at over 20 different varieties, many of them commonly available in North America. And almost all of them had glyphosate in them. And people say, well, it's not enough to do damage, but the truth is one part per trillion of glyphosate is enough to actually negatively impact your hormones. So there is 25 parts per billion, not trillion, but billion, in most common forms of alcohol. So you definitely are having a very negative impact. Do not drink when you're trying to conceive. I'd actually recommend you don't drink in general, but definitely around conception, male, female, zero alcohol is best. What about marijuana? Marijuana is no better. It has hugely negative impact for fertility for women. It damages your egg quality. It can increase your risks of miscarriage and it has enormous neurodevelopmental outcome differences for your babies so that they can actually have emotional problems, psychological problems, developmental problems if they're exposed even early on in your pregnancy. For the guys, again, huge impact on the sperm. Decreased sperm performance, lower counts, higher number of abnormal sperm, and a tremendous increase in your sperm DNA fragmentation, which means along that ladder-like uh, structure of DNA, in the sperm, you get lots of little breakages. Those breakages get passed on, the embryo becomes un unstable, and that leads to a much higher risk of miscarriage. How high? 12-fold higher. So it's an enormous increase in your partner's risk of miscarriage if you as a male are using marijuana products. People also ask us all the time about caffeine. So I'm drinking tea here, and um, tea has variable amounts of caffeine in it. But does caffeine change your risks or improve or, or decrease your chances? So for women, one cup per day or less is fine, and there is no association with any adverse outcomes. But more than one cup per day has been associated with an increased risk of miscarriage. For guys, one to two cups of caffeine per day is actually beneficial because it helps speed up the sperm, but more than that is probably detrimental. So super simple things you guys can do to improve your natural fertility. Make sure you've got your timing right. It's gotta be around the time of your ovulation. Make sure you're using some kind of test to determine when that ovulation is. We recommend doing an ovulation predictor kit. For frequency, it should be every day or every two days, nonstop through the whole month. Lubrication, don't use saliva. Don't use the commercial products. Make sure you're using either an oil-based lubricant or a custom-made solution that's actually optimized for helping you get pregnant. In terms of position, it doesn't matter. Whatever is most comfortable for you, that's perfectly reasonable. Orgasm, definitely recommended, but it has no impact on your fertility. It's just for satisfaction with the, the sexual function and episode. In terms of your diet, a Mediterranean or a Dutch-based diet, which is full of vegetables, fresh fruits, all 
olive oils, light oils, avoid cholesterol and sugar. Make sure that you're eating a healthy, balanced diet. Lots of vitamins will be helpful for you. And then in terms of exposures, get rid of all your exposures. No smoking, no drinking, no drug use. Super easy ways to maximize your fertility without needing a fertility specialist. I hope you find that helpful and join us again on our YouTube channel for more videos that will help you get pregnant faster than normal.